from Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, re-recording mixer John Taylor, a four-time Oscar nominee for Unbroken, Birdman, The Revenant, First Man. His career has also included Fast and Furious 6, Straight Outta Compton, and this year's or last year's Bullet Train. Uh, John, I want to start. This is a stop motion animation movie. I it's a it blew me away the animation and everything. How what kind of challenges does that present for you guys on the sound side of things and specifically in your role as you know re-recording mixer? You know, it's interesting because um, I've never done a film like this before. In fact, I haven't done many animation films. So the advantages in many ways are great. Um, the disadvantages are, you know, you nothing to hide behind ever. You know, it's all it's all very it's so precise in the sound that there's nowhere to hide. You just don't add extra things to cover, you know, production flaws or whatever the case is or help loop lines or, you know, whatever that is. Um, you basically, because I'm taking care of the, you know, all of the dialogue and all the music, uh, the dialogue you is recorded generally in many different places over the past, you know, three years or so. Um, and stringing that together to make it sound like one um, is definitely a challenge. It was um, a little more, you know, a little more challenging than I would have figured, honestly. Um, but because the soundscape is designed precisely and everything is placed uh, and you try to really that I think that was the point of of the film from a sound side was really just precision making sure there wasn't anything extra and that's as far as the dialogue goes too um and with the music you know being so much music the songs everything just having to flow together and then working with the different sounds uh really especially the way that the sounds work with the music, you know, all of the click clacks from Pinocchio and all of the different type of wood. Um, and Scott Gershon did such an amazing job of picking different flavors that would, you know, to make Pinocchio between the wood, the metal, rubber, creaks, things like that. That way you can change the balance that works best with the music. So Frankie, who mixed the effects on this, Frank Montano, uh, was able to take, listen to the music and just every tiny little beat be able to precisely change you know the quality of the sound so in many ways you know doing this type of animation stop motion or you know regular drawing or whatever um it the, it has it's a whole different type of challenge for sure and it was exciting to go through the process you know and knowing guillermo and of course watching all of guillermo's films um you know that's a whole nother type of challenge because it's such a beautiful film yet you know Guillermo is always you know having this really bold you know sound field and uh this film just having an arc you know it just starts so beautiful uh which is you know the the sort of the preciousness of this of the beginning of this film um really very emotionally you know gets you in the first seven minutes are just so beautiful and then it takes that turn and then now it's a whole new type of film so it's constantly evolving and changing you know between the music and what the music is doing and the sound effects and the sound field and the environment and starting off mostly mono with the environment and letting it grow through the film uh really just lets you experience you know just a, a something um a new type of feeling after you know the twist happens about seven minutes in right yeah i mean like i definitely was taken aback by a lot of that and it was it is a very emotional movie it just is like you know not something you would maybe expect like right away even though the story is like everyone knows the story it still is like took me by uh surprise i guess it was right you know that kind of thing you mentioned like yeah. guillermo obviously like he's so uh no like you said like so known for his like you know the the crafts of his films are incredible the sound in these films are unbelievable i guess what was it like you know what was your experience with him and like how did you kind of like did it exceed your expectations i guess you know it did actually um i knew that this was going to be a very dynamic film uh again going from just the the emotional beautiful entrance of the film to the podesta around perlman's character who just really brings down the fire you know because he's just so insistent on how these you know how these kids have to be raised and you know their duty um it was so I knew that we were going to start beautifully and we were going to end big and then we get to dogfish. And then of course it's, you know, really big. Um, and so we really made sure that we had that dynamic soundscape going, but uh, Guillermo of course is like more, <laughs> more, we want more, give me more. 
Um, and he's always right, of course, you know, he really is so in tune with what's happening emotionally in the film at every minute, every single second of the film, he he is in tune with it. And that's that's our thing. We have to be in tune with it. Also, we have to be in tune with him. So on our first on our first pass, we did really well. But it was, uh, you know, we really had it really blah, blah, blah. And Guillermo would say he would say, um, you know, it's so beautiful. It's so nice. You know, we just need a little bit less of that. How do we, you know, let's get into this a little bit more. And uh, that's, that's what we did. You know, it was, and it shows, it shows when you watch the film all the way through rather than, you know, where we're working in sometimes 20 foot increments, you know, where we go back five feet, play 15 feet, adjust five feet, 10. And then you go back and you get like a nice hundred foot run or, you know, a couple minutes run. Um, and you really get to see, you know, where you're at, where everything's sitting. I always compare it to cutting hair. You know, they cut your hair, then they have to move and they have to sh kind of flow your hair around and then take another snip over there and then sit back and look at it. It's very similar to that, the whole experience. But following Guillermo's direction um, was, uh, it was, I would say it was not completely what I expected because it starts just it just just has such a subtlety you know where the way it starts and the way the film is in general it just has a real beauty a very soft emotion a very precise everything that you you're focusing on is so intentional you know uh it was it was a real it was a real pleasure we've done you know lots of lots of films in our lives and uh this one the sim i would say the the obvious simplicity of it was the most challenging part. Yeah. You mentioned obviously having to mix the dialogue and the music and all the, the, everything together. I mean, like uh, for the songs, I think they're really great. Chow Pop was seemingly a standout for a lot of people. I guess, can you talk a little about like working on that sequence and like how you kind of like mix that whole thing together and made it sound like it does in the film and obviously said such a great effect on people who watch the movie. I think that's like a moment that has been very sticky in their minds. First of all, Peter and Kirsty, who actually mixed, who were the uh, scoring mixers, uh, holy smokes, I can't be just absolutely phenomenal. In fact, I saw Alexander, Alexander Desplat last night and I expressed that to him and I said, I just blown away at the quality of the recording of, of course, at the, the Gregory Mann's vocals. It was just, you know, very impressive. So when you take it and you just play, it, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And then you have to say, okay, how can I make this better? What can I, what can I give it that's going to make it better? You know, and of course, working with the sound, um, it's not like, you know, music plays, everything else goes away. Now it's really, again, you know, the, the precision of what works best with this, you know, especially with uh, Chao Papa, which is, um, you know, again, like you said, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's so beautiful it's sad very sad but it's just beautiful and we knew that first as soon as i heard it i said wow this song's going all the way that's all there is to it it's just it's so good um but it was um you know as we're going through it and anytime you get alexander desplat's score you're it's precious it's very you just really think about every single thing that you're doing you put a lot of thought into it so you make sure that it's better than the way you got it that's the goal <laughs> and it was um, taking the other sounds uh, that ha that have to go into it, like Geppetto running to the truck, the truck, you know, he's trying to get a ride from a truck and the truck just goes by. That storytelling, it has, the sound has to be there. You can't just not play it because there's a song playing. So it's making sure that those adjustments just come in very accurately, you know, to where it doesn't take you out of the film, but it brings you into the film and it brings you into the song and it emotionally drives you. Uh, the newspaper spins up and there's a there's a clip. Um, there's a, a clip of sound that goes with it and uh, where that lands, you know, to the beat is very important because you don't want to have two beats. So everything has to be very precise. So we just move things, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there. But the, again, everything that Scott brought was already, you know, precision. So now it's just, you know, just putting it with the music. Um, just 
I don't know how to say it. it's subtlety as our jobs are. It's very subtle. Sometimes you're making half DB moves and, you know, half a frame here or whatever the case, it's all these small parts. Um, but it was, it was, I, I would say going back to the original question, Chao Papa, knowing that it's, this is the song and overplaying it. In other words, playing it too loud would be a mistake, a real mistake, because it's now you're forcing me to hear it i don't i don't want to be pushed back i want to be invited to it and so it's just lots of little passes all the way through lots of little passes before you finally get it right and in fact it was funny because there's a um accordion solo in the middle of it that happens during uh, a bombing scene and guillermo was like no no i need to hear those bombs those distant bombs i need to hear those distant bombs so let's take out the accordion i'm like what no <laughs> no no way but the way that the spot writes the music is he wrote the strings in, mel in melody with the accordion. So actually taking out the high, the high quality sound of the accordion and letting the strings take over, which gave a lot of room for the bombs, musically completely correct. It was actually very, very, very beautiful, really well done, where we let the phrase start with the accordion, drop out for the second part, and then come back in and then drop out for the second part again and let the strings take over. And it's just massaging it all the way through so you can, so the important pieces come through. It, it's incredible hearing you talk about it. And I love like the attention to detail is unbelievable, but I, I, how long would you say, like, how long do you work on something like that? Like, uh, like you said, like just slight fine tuning and all these different things that you're doing. Like, how long does that take? Like for that sequence, like, I guess. You know, for that sequence, because uh, the way it turns out is on your first pass, you may sit back, you know, after you get through it and you spend, let's say, let's say six hours you spend on that scene. And then you sit back and you play it and you're like, wow, okay, cool. Really good. Well, a couple of days later, you're going to look at it again. You're going to say, you know what? Let's do this. Let's the ding, 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 the, the, the train by. That's slightly off still and it's a little loud or whatever the case is. So you'll spend another four or five hours. So on that, I would say that song alone, which actually, it was very smooth because it's everything, again, everything came in so good, but probably a day and a half on that one scene, right? you know, just to really nail it. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable, that, like I said, and like, I'm like, the whole movie is like, I feel like, like that as well. And for people who watch it and have watched it, I think it really comes through and it's just is an incredible experience, I think, and like for all the different reasons with the sound as, as well. Uh, John Taylor, a re-recording mixer from Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.